Okay, so we're back with this Bose SoundLink Micro. What I want to do here is just reassemble it and talk a bit about battery replacements. This video I will not actually be doing a complete battery replacement because it doesn't need one yet, but here it is in pieces and I can discuss in a bit more detail the various options that you have for a battery replacement on the Bose SoundLink Micro. Now what I'm gonna be using to reassemble this, this is an experiment. I'm just gonna use some DAP Dynaflex interior exterior sealant. It is not really an adhesive, but it can function like one. That's really what I'm going to be using to seal this back up together to see how well it holds since I managed to damage all of the clips that hold this thing together mechanically. So can the elastomer sealant do a good enough job to hold this together and we can play music through it, reassemble it with the outer aesthetic shell, get good performance from it. Acoustically, the thing doesn't just pop apart as soon as it bump it up against something. My feeling is that it won't. If you don't feel comfortable going inside of electronics, and, and in this case, you're gonna have to be a bit more forceful than you think to get inside of this thing, then I would say skip it. <laughs> Just buy another one or buy something else or whatever. So anyways, I'm gonna put all this back together again. Start with reassembling the main PCB, the battery, and the speaker. And most importantly, making sure that any of the debris that was left over when you're taking this apart. You wanna make sure as best as you possibly can that none of the debris is inside of this enclosure because when you start to play music through it or anything through it, you're gonna start hearing that stuff rattling and vibrating inside there because there's a lot of pressure change that is occurring inside this enclosure because it's a sealed resonant chamber. So I'm gonna put the speaker back in place. Make sure that that gasket is lined up. It is designed to go that way. I think I had it upside down. Yeah, that seems more. Yep, that seems correct. It's got a little lip on it. That lip actually goes face down and you'll see that it matches up with a little channel that is in the plastic enclosure. There's also a pin on one side. I think that's a guide pin so that you know that the, when it's being assembled that the speaker only can go in one direction. Otherwise you're not gonna be able to get the printed circuit board in because the, the wires aren't long enough. I think before I get that speaker in, I'm gonna get this uh, printed circuit board back into place. And it just you just push it just underneath the horizontal board that's for the micro USB and the two buttons on the top. And there's a guide post on one side and then I think on the other side there actually isn't, but it just, you just gotta push it down. Because the speaker's not in place yet, it'll kind of not wanna sit completely flat. The battery wires and the speaker are kind of keeping it from sitting completely flat. So now I'll just take the speaker, orient it so that I can get it into that guide pin Make sure that that seal is in place. Ooh, that seal does move around a bit. So let's make sure that seal's in place. If it's not in place, even if you put the sealant in and you get that a perfect seal and the speaker is not well sealed, then you will start getting sounds, whistling, a variety of unpleasant things that will make the speaker not sound as good. So while all this is kind of situated, I'm gonna get the screws guided in place with my finger and then I'll start tightening them down. I would recommend going back and forth a couple of times, making sure that it's evenly, just tightening it up a little bit more on each side. And it definitely feels like it, it reaches a point where there's no more travel. You don't wanna to be torquing this thing down too much because it will break the plastic. Okay, now what I'm doing is I'm just looking at where the seal's gonna be made on the opposite side of this enclosure. Here's the one lip and the other lip. And this, is, this piece here is gonna go in between those two points. So I'm gonna put the Dynaflex all the way around this and then just situate it in there. And in order for it to even stick to anything, all of this as best as I possibly can has to come off. So I'm just gonna go around here and get all of the sealant cleared out and go all the way around. I've got most of it. If you got a little bit left over, that's okay. You just wanna make sure that in the groove where it's going to sit between the inner guide and the outer guide, that that groove in there is as clean as it possibly can be. Um, again, do as I say, not as I do. I'm doing this over the, over the open speaker, which is getting stuff inside of it and could cause noises. For, I'm gonna keep cleaning that out in a second, but before I forget, I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna hit the whole thing with a vacuum, not the speaker, but my work surface. I've cleaned all that off. We have 
four screws left and they are for the printed circuit board and battery assembly. I think there is one, I don't think there's any screws that are really holding the printed circuit board down. There's two posts. There's one here that I already pointed out and there's the other that's over here. You need to make sure that those both are lined and guided in there. And is there, I don't remember putting screws in. No, there's nothing there and nothing there. So there's no screws that go into the printed circuit board. It's just getting this battery back into place. Before we do that, we've got this flat flex board to board connector. This is just a friction fit. So you want to line that up. What I generally do is kind of rock it from one end to the other and it'll snap back in there. And we'll just test this before we start reassembling things by powering it back on. If it powers on, then yeah, we know that it's, it's functioning. By functioning, I mean that the flat flex cable is actually connected properly. And now I'm just gonna put the battery back into place. And the battery just kind of rotates around here. Make sure all the tape and foam is in place. You don't want wires vibrating at their resonant frequencies inside this enclosure. That would be quite annoying. And I just dropped another screw inside there, which is a bad idea. Let's try that again with a guided approach. Again, I would do a cross tightening sort of situation with this battery because you don't want to over torque its little assembly. So I'm just doing that. This flap is so annoying. I think it probably slides out. So if you, I don't know. I am not going to try it now, but I think you probably could get that out if you really were annoyed by it. And then you have this thing basically reassembled. Before I continue with reassembly, uh, just getting that back case back on, let's talk about the battery a little bit. I did a bit of research, and you can find replacement batteries for the SoundLink Micro that are the assembly. And, the, and it seems like it just comes with the four wires that need to be connected, which are the two power wires and then the two thermistor wires. They might be fine, they might not. My preferred route would be to continue to use the onboard protection circuit and get a tabbed 18650 cell where you could probably find a 3350 milliamp hour cell or even a 3500 milliamp hour cell that's an 18650 style and remove and replace that. But it all depends on your comfort level. I mean, if you're already inside of this and you're comfortable around lithium batteries, you can remove the thermistor, replace it with some polyethylene tape I make sure that you have the thermistor in that in place and, and, and the protective circuitry still in place. Just make sure that you're getting the replacement battery from a reputable source. I'd recommend checking to see if you can get one that actually is a Bose replacement unit. Maybe if, there are modules that are for sale as well as obviously you can you can get 1860 cells no problem. What I'm doing with the needle nose pliers is basically removing every little piece of paper and debris and the silicone material that I can find so that when I apply the new silicone material it will actually stick. Yeah I've got some imperfections here where I've kind of cut up this a bit so we're gonna see how this actually <laughs> works. There's gonna be some areas where it seems like the silicone is gonna be doing most of the work. That is the mechanical work where I've chewed into the plastic and there's no plastic now left. Don't want to scratch it up too much because I don't want to make deeper grooves in the enclosure than need be. I mean the silicone will fill that up but I'd rather just not have to deal with that. I think I'm gonna grab the clippers and trim off these burrs that I've created so that when I put this all back together with this silicone rubber in outer enclosure. I don't snag it or crack it or anything. I'm gonna bend this back into place just gently. I don't think it's gonna have any sort of structural integrity left, but I'd just prefer it to be uh, lined up like it was intended to be. I think that was the only area I really went kind of crazy, tried to get it open. Again, what I'm doing is making sure that I have a nice curve there so that when the enclosure goes on, I don't just rip the outer cover because remember, you're not gonna see this, but you are gonna see the outer cover. So make sure we get all the material out of there as best as it possibly can. 
then what I'm going to do is I'm going to this is a new thing of DAP Dynaflex. I'm going to just place, yeah, I didn't get this completely clean. This is me being impatient right now because I want to really see if this actually works or not. And let's just hit this whole area with the vacuum so that all the debris is gone. Uh, I think they put the PET film over this so that they could put the silicone adhesive on here and it probably wouldn't stick to the label or they didn't want it on the label or I don't know, something like that. There's some PET film over that, so I'm just going to put that back in place right, right there. And now we're going to just test fit this really quick to make sure everything goes back. It's not going to snap back into place, but we're just going to make sure that it will go when, when it needs to go. I think the back has to go in first. So kind of push back on this and rock the two little pieces in place. Those two little pegs in place. I broke one of them, but the other one is still intact. But it's not grabbing for some reason. Does the front all grab together? Let's just see. Yeah, it is. Okay, so it's holding itself together. <laughs> I don't know what this is going to sound like with just like this. I don't know. Let's see. It may sound all right with no silicon on it. Let's see. I'm going to power it on. Oh, this side. Okay. It sounds okay when that little tone came on. It had more fuller sounding than when it was just sitting, obviously, with the speaker in open air. Sounds pretty good. I mean, no. Yeah, something's vibrating in there. It might be the enclosure. Ooh. That sound is air escaping. <laughs> okay, so horrible d distortion, but that's not the speaker's fault. That is the fact that it's not properly sealed all the way around. Okay, cool. We just need to get that sealed back in place. So let's get it apart. Let's turn it off first. Okay, so I'm gonna reopen this which shouldn't be too difficult. Watch, now it's gonna be super difficult to get it open, which would be hilarious because all the clips are gone. Nope. It does snap back together. That I'm impressed with, but it doesn't really have the same grip force, obviously, that it had before. It's grabbing on this right side, or the, is it the right side? One of the sides, but still have some teeth left. And uh, there we go, get that. Oh, there are teeth back there too? There are, there are teeth in the back. So that's why it's not closing all the way. There's teeth back here. Okay, that's why I was having some trouble. Well, here's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna get the silicone adhesive in there. This is gonna take some time, so I'm not gonna just sit here and wait for paint to dry. But this should cure in about, looks like two to four hours. So we're gonna cut it, and then we're gonna apply it to the outer ring of this, this whole outer ring here. And I'm gonna cut it, I'm cutting it as the nozzle, as, as close to the tip as possible with this particular material because I want to keep it very close to the, the, the gap of this channel. So here we go. I'm just apply this. Looks almost like it's the original stuff. Okay, I'm gonna keep this going because you don't have a whole ton of time with this. Probably about 15 minutes. And it's okay if it's not like going down inside of the channel because you're gonna push it down with the other side of this thing mating to it and pushing into that gap. So it'll provide that seal. And I am gonna add a lot of this stuff because it needs to fill not only the gap, but the areas where I cut into the <laughs> plastic. Yeah, I could've cleaned this up a little bit better. Whatever. So, as you can see, it's a lot that's in there, but we've got a pretty good gap. I'm gonna seal this up so we don't have that dry up. It's a lot of it's sealant, which is fine, because you wanna make sure we have enough to fill in like gaps where I've actually cut into the plastic. And so now I'm gonna try to just get this back in here. Okay, here's, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this and hold this little strap over the top like this, and then we're gonna go, the back end has to go in first, so gonna push the back in first make sure it's lined up which it is not line it up 
you can hear the air coming out now. When I squeeze that together, there was a sound. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. It looks like it might be all snapped together. But let me just make sure. No, the back is still not in. This is a silicone mat, so the silicone will not stick to it. So it'll be super easy to clean that part of it up. But this is not completely on there yet. I'm going to wipe off the excess and we're going to reopen it because it's not it's not clipping on that back part. And if it can't if it doesn't clip on the back, it's not going to seal. There's not enough space in there. So that's okay. Not what I was hoping for, but I'm just going to reopen this. Kind of a mess now. <laughs> it's like you've baked a cake and you're like taking the cake apart after it's been baked or something. This didn't clip in there for some reason in the back, and I don't know why. And I really would like to not damage those clips anymore. You can see where it's making nice contact all the way around here. In the front, less so. So I'm going to add a little bit more to the front. Then I think I'm going to just clip off these little nubs, unfortunately, to get it to seal. I don't like doing this, but they aren't the ones providing the connection. They are providing mechanical securement, but they are not the ones holding the speaker together. Really, it's up to the adhesive now, and that's fine. So I'm going to put a little bit more just in the front, uh, where did I say, around this like front lip. Basically, too much adhesive. You just don't want it to get on the speaker, and you don't want too much in there so that it's vibrating in there. Okay, I think that that's pretty good. I'm just gonna smooth this out a little bit so it's not touching just on the inside. There we go. Push it all against the front lip of the of the bottom enclosure so that when I'm pushing it in, the opposite side channel will push into the material and not push it out of the way. You want it on both sides so that you get a good seal. Try again, round two. That seems like a much better seal on back. You can see how it's really, really tight back there. Cool. What I need to do is, oh man, that was a bad idea. Um, this is gonna need some mass on it for a while. I think I'm gonna have to put something on it. I know that I can use to keep this clamp together for about, eh, I'm gonna go for about a half an hour probably. And then before I do that, I'm gonna wipe off all the extra. And like they did at the factory, fill in some of these gaps that look like they need some additional filling in where I made a bit of a mess. You want as close to airtight as you can get. It doesn't seem like it's holding itself, so that's good. This is just what I'm doing here. I'm just filling in the gaps where I know that I've cut into the plastic. That, that can be cleaned up, but let's just make sure all the gaps are filled first. And I wanna make sure that it's sealed because if it's not sealed, you're gonna have the same vibrate distorted sound that we were experiencing before when it wasn't fully sealed. All right, that's good. I'm taking this now. There it is, you can see it's sealed all the way around. On the outside, I wanted to get the outside as well as the inside sealed. So the seal on the inside I think is pretty good, but also on the outside because again, I remove material. So now I'm gonna take this very quickly, pause, come back, and we will test it out once it has been, when it's sat for about probably an hour. So, back soon.